Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and we have got the community in an uproar, so it's time to talk about it. So what happened was today, Plarium, uh, this morning, a few hours ago, they released a raid a digest, they call it, where they give their updates on, on a few things here. And they're they're going through, talking about the awakening uh, mechanic and uh, some changes they're making to the Iron Towers boss. They're uh, adjusting unkillable type stuff and Paragon causing drama once again. Uh, so people are in an uproar about some of these changes because they had worked on teams and spent a lot of silver and books and and chicken and stuff to to get these things working and then only to find out a day later it gets nerfed so i'm just going to go through and give you some context on what's happening right now in the community because of the raid digest that came out this morning so let's get into it Alrighty, so first of all, I'll just quickly give you some context as to what is going on here, just in case you're out of the loop and you're coming to my video to get the news real quick. They say, first, there will be no events or tournaments for the Awakening-related activities, raiding Iron Twins Fortress, summoning souls, Awakening of Champions, etc. in the nearest future. And uh, it's funny how you, you notice how throughout the years, Plarium uh, never says soon anymore. Uh, they, they say, like, in the nearest of futures and stuff like that. But anyway, no tournaments or events events are currently planned in the near future uh, around the awakening mechanics. So there's not going to be like an event where you get points by awakening a champion or something like that. And then you get rewards based on those points. Then it says, secondly, there will be no 2x or 10x summon boost events of summoning souls, at least for the immediate future. And don't forget to fill in your soul wishlist, though, as it's specifically designed as a permanent booster for the chances of getting souls that you need. So, yeah, all, that was another thing that I was curious about is are we going to get a 10x for like Duchess souls or something? But as of right now, in what they are telling us, that is not going to be the case. They're, it's just going to be a base level mechanic with no events no 2x and no 10x they also clarified something on blessings by saying let's now turn our attention to blessings please note that neither accuracy of a champion that applies to a blessing nor the target's resistance affect the chances of the successful landing of the blessing therefore the target cannot resist or somehow block blessings unless otherwise specified in the blessings description also debuffs and block active or passive skills being applied to an awakened champion do not preclude them from activating their blessings or getting passive benefits from them. Then we've got the one that is causing a little bit of an uproar here. Changes and fixes. We keep tweaking the Iron Twins boss to deliver a challenge and challenging and meaningful gameplay experience in that dungeon. The boss will be able to ignore unkillable buff with some of its skills so that one champion unkillable based teams will stop being the all around universal solution. Now, obviously, this is because of Paragon and Paragon continues to be a thorn in Plarium's side because because of this ability right here, place an unkillable buff and a 25% increased attack buff on a target ally for two turns. This books down to a two turn cooldown by placing this unkillable buff. I'm sure if Plarium could go back, they would either delete Paragon or make this book to a three turn cooldown because this has been a massive source of trouble for them throughout the years by people using Paragon to, to uh, cheese through content. And there's probably a few different reasons that this causes a little bit of an uproar and leaves a salty taste in people's mouths uh, to make them upset about the game and about playing in general. Because um, A, you're going to be investing resources, you're going to be spending chicken, you're going to be spending books, you're going to be spending time and silver and all of that to not only uh, build a paragon for this, uh, this this current content that's been added to the game really quick and you're excited about clearing it, but also a team built around doing that. You're spending time to get that done and all the resources involved with getting that done and tuning things to be able to progress in this dungeon as fast as you can. And then a day later, it all gets nerfed and all of your resources were basically wasted because now that entire team that you built is not going to be able to be used for the content you were designing it for. Which I can totally understand that frustration because this is not a free to play game. I mean, it is, but a lot of times people are spending real money on resources in game. And then when you end up throwing away that real money, obviously I understand the frustration there for anybody that lost resources in building a Paragon team or a team that is now going to be rendered worthless by the, uh, by the changes to the Iron Twins boss. 
Now, personally, I think a good solution for something like this would be to, whenever you make changes like this or you nerf champions or anything like that, they need to provide like a 72 hour window to refund resources or something on a champion that was affected. So uh, you can refund a chicken or bruise or reset a champion or whatever and get those resources back. I think that would be a good middle ground and where people would be like, ah, like I wasted my time. That's super annoying, but at least I get my resources back. So it wouldn't be perfect, but at least uh, I think then there wouldn't be as much outrage if Plame could figure out a way to kind of code that in the game. Uh, but first, they would have to be willing to, to do something like that and, uh, and talk about being willing to add that at some point in the future. But that's what I would recommend doing is giving players that opportunity to get some of the resources back after things are adjusted to really affect the game like this. And I can also show you the top comment here from the thread and to give you some context on that. So I believed and said there was no way they would release the boss allowing unkillable considering it's the only source of new resource. I was wrong. Now nerfing unkillable within less than half a week is absurd. There is absolutely no excuse for this. Endless unkillable may have been an oversight for a clan boss, but that is precisely why they made it impossible and so much harder for the Hydra. It is incomprehensible. They did not foresee the one paragon g strat it's been used in so many other areas of the game they know it exists it's insane to even begin to think they would have missed this there should be compensation to anyone who invested paragon over the last few days so yeah they're kind of saying uh, exactly what i was kind of mentioning here so i'm in agreement so far absolutely bonkers uh course of action by Plarium. normally i'd agree that you shouldn't attribute the to malice when you can attribute to incompetence but this level of incompetence is hard to grasp it it does feel malicious uh, I, I don't know if I agree with the last uh, paragraph. I don't think Polarium's like sitting there, uh, you know, twisting their hands and coming up with ways to to siphon chicken out of people that would invest in Paragon. I, I mean, I really doubt that that was like an intention, but the incompetence part, I do agree with. They should have definitely planned for this like they did with the Hydra. You can tell that Polarium really does not want players to be able to build these unkillable teams that make uh content completely uh not played in the vein that they would like it to be played in uh aka the clan boss now if you're not familiar with back in the day the they, they actually didn't used to have a, fir a 50 turn limit on the demon lord as we as we know it now but it was always called the clan boss for years so there the, the, people started building these unkillable teams for the clan boss about a year into the game or so is when the theory crafting started to ramp up and people started to really understand as a community different ways to tackle this content now once people were building these unkillable compositions all of a sudden you could build a trash team that would just live forever and like you didn't even need any gear um or, or any or any sort of like high damage gear because you could just build a team that would live for a thousand turns and get your damage in so what planarium did to balance this was they set a cap of 50 turns so now, even if you build an unkillable composition, it's not going to just last forever. You're going to have to do enough DPS to get your damage in within 50 turns. And that was kind of the way they balanced it. And players were mostly okay with this. There was definitely a little bit of backlash and people weren't super excited about it. But it was a good middle ground for Plarium saying, okay, we'll let you guys have your unkillable teams. But you're going to have to at least build a decent amount of damage to be able to get a good amount of DPS done in that 50 turns. But now, with new content like the Hydra, you can tell they're adding so much RNG and so much random stuff to it that you can tell they don't want people to be able to tune these unkillable teams to kind of skate around having to play content the right way, how they intend it to be played. And they had some oversight here with the, uh, with the new boss, and then they had to come through afterwards and adjust it. So obviously, people are going to be upset, and mostly rightfully so. So yeah, that's what's going on, and that's what kind of the sentiment is here, and that's how I feel about it, but uh, definitely let me know what you think down below. I always enjoy reading the community's opinions on topics like this, because this is all stuff that we need to discuss as Raid kind of heads on into the future, and we've always got new content going on, and uh, and crazy things like this happening as, as new things come out and get added to the game. So yeah, as always, remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily Raid Shadow Legends content, and I will see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.